morning, my friends. I'm Pastor Ben Hayes from First Baptist Church, Dadeville, Alabama, bringing you our thought for the day. On this magnificent Monday, it's uh, going to be a little bit cooler today, but we're excited about what uh, God has in store for us on this day that he has created so that we might worship and serve him. And I hope that you will do exactly that. And no better way to start your day than with a copy of the word in one hand, a cup of coffee in the other, and uh, saying a little prayer as you speak to the Father and allow him to speak to you. Right now, we're finishing up 2 Timothy. We're looking at concluding remarks uh, of the Apostle Paul as he's writing to young Timothy, a pastor who needs some encouragement, uh, knowing that Paul's time is coming to an end on this earth, and um, Timothy has to continue going on. And Paul says, I want to see you again, so make sure you get here. And he he gives some concluding remarks. And then as we come down to this uh, chapter 4, verse 14, he, uh, he reminds Timothy of something. He says, Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm. May the Lord repay him according to his works. You also must be aware of him, for he has greatly resisted our words. At my first defense, no one stood with me, but all forsook me. May it not be charged against them. Now, this is an interesting passage. Now, wouldn't you hate to be uh, the person uh, whose name goes down in history as part of a, uh, a plan to, to hurt the Apostle Paul? I mean, this is, this is pretty bad. Uh, how many times has this uh, passage been read and talked about? But Alexander the coppersmith there in Ephesus had, uh, had risen up against Paul for whatever reason, and uh, probably because Paul had cut into his business with, uh, uh, by bringing uh, pagans into the, the, the faith of Christianity, and uh, they stopped uh, using his services to make their idols and other things that, that he was doing. And uh, he, he worked hard against Paul. And, you know, I've discovered there are people like that in our churches. They're the tares that Jesus talked about, those uh, enemies of the, the gospel that Satan uh, plants within the church to keep things stirred up, to cause division and discord. And, uh, folks, let me tell you something. God is the one who's going to deal with them ultimately. Paul makes that clear. He says, may the Lord repay him according to his works. And God will. Uh, God will. And and our prayer is that they will come to repentance and turn from their wicked ways and uh, turn back to the Father. But so often that doesn't happen because uh, they get to the point uh, that Alexander is at uh, because their hearts have been hardened and they have committed that unpardonable sin uh, to the point that they've rejected God so much that they'll never hear the voice of the Spirit again. Uh, I've known people like that. You've known people like that. And uh, but but Paul's point in bringing this up was for Timothy. He says you've got to be aware of him, and we have to be willing to 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 do that if we want to help this next generation. We have to be willing to to point out some of the pitfalls and the dangers and the dangerous people. Uh, of course, in this um, <laughs> age of litigation, uh, we have to be careful how we do it. But we have to be honest, and we have to make sure that people are aware that there are those who are out uh, to harm the church and the, the ministers of the gospel. And I would encourage you uh, to, to make sure that you're not one of those that, that, that does those types of things. Uh, if you've got a problem with your pastor, if you've got a problem with me, come and talk to me. Come, let's, let's talk it out and see what's going on. Let's not try to stir up problems within the church. If you disagree with the direction that the church is going, come and talk to the leadership. And uh, if, if the leadership is set in, in going a certain way and that's not your way, then maybe you need to find another church. And please don't hear me saying, you know, I want that to happen because I think that we ought to be able to work everything out. But Paul is, is, has been hurt so many times. And he says, you know, when, when all of this started, nobody came to my defense. Everybody left me. I've been there. I've done that. I know what that feels like. And uh, it's, it's a tough situation. But the good news is that God will always see you through, just like he did with the Apostle Paul, and just like he, he will do for you. But look at verse 17. He says, But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message might be preached fully through me and that all the Gentiles might hear. Also, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion, and the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, I want you to hear this. This promise is true for Paul. It's true for you. As long as we're serving God faithfully, he will take care of us. Now, understand there's coming a time when uh, persecution happens and we may think that we're all alone, but God is still with you. We may think that this is the end, and it may be, 
but God will walk with you through that moment that uh, you walk into his eternal presence and experience the joys of heaven forever. What a great promise. God loves you, and I love you. Be blessed.